A lot of guitarists out there have asked me about my recording setup and if I have any advice for setting up a DAW. So that's what I'm going to get into in this video. If you followed any of my work, you might have noticed that I have a problem. I can't do anything half-assed. And believe me, I've tried. What happens is I go into teaching mode, I want to give context, overview, principles, how and why, application, dive into the specifics, and before you know it, this little video idea about, you know, DAWs suddenly has become a series, it's become a course. I guess that shouldn't be too surprising though because I started hard disk recording all the way back in the late 90s when it was just becoming a thing. Building computers and DAWs about every two years. I ran my studio commercially for a while. Now I'm doing video production, so I actually have quite a bit to say about this. In this first video, I'm going to focus on the core of the system, the computer itself. How much do you really need? How much horsepower? What about age? What about operating systems? Mac versus PC. I've been on both sides of the fence. I ran on PCs for years. Now I'm on Mac, but I uh, have some perspective I want to give you about that. And some ideas that might save you some money and really enable you to target how to build the DAW that's really going to work for you. In the next video, I'll be going into the hardware and the architecture. That's the really confusing area because there are so many different ways to set up and run a DAW. So let's start with a little history, kind of get the lay of the land here, and then we'll dive into the computer itself because that, of course, is the heart of any DAW. In the late 90s, I picked up a book called How to Build Computers, and I built my first PC for my first DAW. I used it to record my instrumental album, Exotica, which released in 2000. On that, I actually used Cubase VST version 3 on good old Windows 95. I reminisce sometimes about getting that old blue screen of death. Quite a nightmare, and I know that some of you that are old enough to have used Windows 95 know what I'm talking about. Anyway, from about 99 to 2004, I produced uh, about 100 bands, mostly demos, but a lot of CDs for release as well. Then in 2010, I produced the second Soul album. These days, it's mostly just about doing my own stuff. Last year, I released Through the Hall of Mirrors. This year, instrumental encounters of the fourth kind, and of course, all this video production. The good news is that things actually work now, and they work pretty reliably, so, you know, that's great. You can expect things to actually work. The bad news, though, is that there are so many choices that it's become pretty much overwhelming, and how do you even know, you know, what the best system is going to be to get what it is that you want to do, and how much do you have to spend to get it? The heart of your DAW, of course, is the computer. And these days, you can probably use whatever you already have. Computing power has gotten so high at this point that just about any Mac or PC made in the last 10 years is probably more than adequate. You don't need cutting edge horsepower or super fast drives to run audio. Now, don't get me wrong, horsepower is nice, fast drives are nice. I'm just saying it's not essential to get the job done. An older machine can probably work just fine. However, there is one issue about an older machine that you want to be aware of. It's the issue of longevity, meaning that as technology evolves, you know, there comes a point where an older machine just can't be updated to the current operating system. And that's a problem because if you don't have a current operating system, then you can't run current software and you won't have the latest and greatest tools. You won't be able to evolve and grow as a producer, you know, using current tools. Of course, an older machine is going to be super cheap. So if you piece together a DAW, you know, that can be a, a really potentially great option. If you're going to do that, you need to do it with your eyes open, recognizing that if the machine is old enough, you know, maybe it's running a current operating system now, but if the machine's already eight years old, you know, how many more upgrades are you going to be able to do? Well, probably not too many. So just make sure you don't overpay for something that's old. If you already own an older machine, well, that's great because it's free to use. So no harm done. Set up your DAW and run it as long as you can. Why wouldn't you? Well, I'll tell you one reason why most people wouldn't want to do that. 
it's just this idea that you're jumping into this new adventure of hard drive recording, you're gonna learn about it, you're gonna set up this DAW, and it's very appealing to want to start on a clean slate. You know, just let's start with a new machine and let, you know, let's build a good one. Okay, I get that. And here's what I'll say about it. If your budget is so high that you can afford to do that, well, obviously go for it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But on the other hand, if you're on a limited budget, you're probably better off to use a computer that's gonna get the job done, the one you already have, and invest into the other elements. If you skimp there on the other hardware, that can have impacts into the architecture of your DAW, and that can really shoot you in the foot. You can read the specifications and the sales brochures of the different hardware, and it'll tell you that it's gonna do everything and wipe your butt too, but the truth of the matter is when it actually comes down to using things, there are better ways and less better ways to get the job done, and the better ways are elegant and a real pleasure to use, and the annoying ways can really stop your creative flow, and, and we don't wanna have to deal with that. So if you're in that situation where you wanna build your DAW and you're thinking, okay, I got this older computer, but you know I wanna buy a new one, you know, again, if, if you got the money to do it, great, but if you're having to compromise in the other areas of your DAW in order to afford the computer, you'd probably be better off sticking with the computer you have and thinking in terms of it being a training mission, you know, an experimentation. You're going to learn uh, how you use the things, what you like and you don't like. There's also a very practical benefit of putting off a computer upgrade, frankly, as long as you can until it's really necessary. And it comes down to that observation, it's called Moore's Law, that computing power doubles about every 18 months. And what that means is that the newest, latest, greatest technologies always come out at a certain price. And then last year's technology, or two years ago technology, now is, is much cheaper. So it looks like this in terms of a price versus performance chart. You have to pay through the nose to get the latest and greatest stuff, and if you buy a little bit behind the curve, you get good power for less money. You don't need to buy a bunch of horsepower you don't even need. We can save money on that end of things and put it into the hardware. Avoiding the bleeding edge, you know, that cutting edge where you pay through the nose to get the latest and greatest, fastest stuff, it's not only a good idea because you don't need that power and it'll save you money to avoid it, but it's actually a good idea because new stuff generally has bugs that need to be worked out. So they come out with a, a new technology and a new operating system and all of the audio software has to catch up to it. So it doesn't work great with it right away. You're better off to wait a bit and allow other people to kind of figure out what the problems are, what the bugs are, let the software companies fix it, make everything compatible, give yourself at least six months, uh, maybe a year, and like I said, two years is even better when it comes to the price point, and you can go back as much as even four. If you're starting to look at anything older than four years, now you have to start to be a little bit uh, more cautious about it. That doesn't mean it's a bad idea because there are exceptions, okay? And if you can get it at a bargain price and get the job done, you know, that could be a great solution too. The best case scenario, again, is you don't have to spend anything on a computer because you can use what you already have and then only upgrade when it's absolutely necessary. Here's the computer that's been at the heart of my system here for about the last five years. It's a Mac Pro, quite a beast of a computer. It's a 12 cores, more than enough processing power. I need to give a big shout out to a friend of mine, Joe Crook, because he actually gifted this to me so I could get into video. And this is a good illustration of what I'm talking about with an older computer because this is actually a 2010 series design, but it's upgraded and it's running Catalina, which is the operating system 10.15, which is a currently supported operating system by, by Apple. 
Catalina works great. I don't have any bugs or problems with any of the audio software. And once I have a system that's working and it's solid, I'm really hesitant to want to update it or upgrade it or change anything because anytime you update, you're kind of asking for trouble. Things break. Things suddenly aren't happy playing in the new sandbox. Despite that fact, though, Obviously, sometimes an update is essential. You can't get away from it, you know, that's just kind of the nature of how it works. So it's kind of par for the course that you might have some compatibility problems. The newer the upgrade is, the more trouble you're probably asking for. However, despite that, I'm actually in the process of upgrading right now. I've got a MacBook Pro M1 Max on order and I'm going to migrate over to that really soon. Now the reason that I'm doing that though has nothing to do with audio, that's for video, okay? Because this machine that I have now, you know, it works good for 1080p video, but I want to move into being able to to push 4K video around and this machine is kind of choking and taking forever. So, I want to make that upgrade. It's kind of asking for a little bit of trouble though, because I'm sure they're gonna ship it with Monterey, and I'm sure that some of my audio software isn't gonna be happy with that, so I'm expecting, you know, there's probably gonna be some trouble. Anyway, all this talk about Max is a great segue into my next point. For most of my hard disk recording experience, I've been on PCs. You know, when I started in the late 90s, you could build a cutting edge PC for less than half the price you would have to pay to buy a, a similar horsepower in a Mac. But there was a drawback, of course. The PCs would run Windows and Windows was not as stable of a system. So if you had money and money was no object really, you just wanted to build the best system, it would be, you know, Pro Tools running on a Mac. But for me at the time, uh, money was a limiting consideration, so I had to go the PC route, and it wasn't impossible to get a solid, stable system. You had to experiment a bit with it, work out the kinks yourself, but it could be done. Here are a few of the computers I built in the 2000s when I was running my studio commercially. And here, this last one I built before I got the current Mac Pro I just showed you. This one is a dual boot machine, so it would run either Windows, or if I booted on this hard drive, it would run as a Hackintosh, which means I'm putting a Mac operating system onto a PC with the help of some software patching. Anyway, it worked fine for me for a few years. Great machine for audio, monstrous rack mount server case. I didn't even bother to uh, mount these hard drives because they're just sitting there, but you know, whatever gets the job done. What really happens is that a product comes out and you know it's, it's either really good, it works pretty well, or better than a competitor, and then a reputation gets established. So early on, you know, Windows reputation was really bad because the product didn't work as well and Macs were you know, the right way to do it or the better way to do it. And so what happens is people kind of build that, that prejudice. Oh, you know, Mac is the serious operating system. Mac is more stable. And it certainly was true in the past, I don't know that that's true anymore. My Mac is locked up from time to time. You know, things still go wrong and things crash. So don't think that, you know, just because, you know, there's a reputation around something that that's necessarily true for the current products because new operating systems come out, new technologies come out and things change. And that's the same thing that happened with Pro Tools on the software side. I'll talk more about this later. But early on, Pro Tools had the best system for hard disk recording. Uh, it was the most expensive by far, but it also worked the best because they had a lot of proprietary outboard gear to help with all the processes. Well, today, we don't need any of that stuff. And as far as software goes, Pro Tools isn't any better than other softwares. In fact, for many things, there are other softwares that work better. So uh, I'll talk some about that uh, later in the next videos. But uh, the point is that just because a reputation is established uh, doesn't mean that it's necessarily true for what's, what's being used now. Somebody might say, well, you know, you need to learn Pro Tools because, you know, that's what all the professional studios or the biggest professional studios use. Well, yeah, that's true. They use it because they started with it because it was the only option, the only really good option back then for reliability 
and good productivity. And so they jumped on that. But once they jumped on it, the reason they're still using it is because that's what they use. And so they just stick with it and they keep upgrading. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's better. If you are, of course, an engineer and you want to go work in one of those studios, well, obviously you need to know how to use Pro Tools. If you want to trade files back and forth, it's a little nicer that you're on the same platform. But actually, that's a problem that can also be surmounted. But in any case, you know, that's the story with, with Pro Tools. And that's the same story that we have really with the Mac. Early on, it was better for stability. It got that reputation. And now that reputation sort of hangs with it, even though it's not really necessarily true anymore. So I've been on both sides of the fence, Mac and PC, and my advice on that issue at this point is that it really doesn't matter because either one is going to get the job done for you. Probably the best bet is to stick with the operating system that you already know, that you're familiar with. If you know your way around Windows, you know, you can stick with that. That said, however, I'll also tell you that I greatly prefer Mac. It's just a cleaner operating system. Windows, I think, has gone toward this thing of, of bloat, of trying to throw more stuff in there. Really, the job of an operating system, I think, shouldn't be to try to manage and do everything for you. It should just be a transparent environment that is stable and allows you to run your programs and access your data. That's all it needs to do. And all these updates, especially Windows, are just this huge pain in the butt. Constantly changing, downloading new patches, fixing things. You know, why don't they just make it right the first time? That would be a great idea. While I'm on that subject, the whole notion of constantly updating the operating systems, you know, every, every year or two, a new operating system comes out, you know, which is frankly true for, for all the platforms. This is uh, quite an annoyance and quite unnecessary. Now, at least Apple's updates are more structural, it seems, like the, it's not so much about a facelift, you know. Uh, Windows, on the other hand, just shuffles things around, changes how you access things. So basically, it means that you have to learn a new operating system because they took all the stuff that you already know where it is, and now they shuffle it around and hide it in new menus, and now you don't know what's going on. And they call that an improvement. Well, of course, it's not an improvement. It's just a way to bilk a couple extra billion dollars out of everybody. It's just ridiculous. It's uh, Operating system is not a style statement. You know, maybe they could listen a little bit less to their marketing departments and think a little bit more about the quality of the product and the function of the product. Now, of course, it's not quite that simple because as the hardware technologies evolve, at some point, you know, an operating system has to accommodate for that and, and it has to work with that. So it does have to update and change. But what doesn't have to update and change is the look and feel and the placement of things. And that's where Apple uh, really excels over Windows. Anyway, bottom line for your DAW is if you're on Windows, if you like Windows and you know Windows, stick with Windows, go ahead and build your DAW, but then do a quick Google search for, you know, set up Windows 10 for DAW or whatever, you know, maybe if it's 11's coming out and next year, whatever, whatever you're on, search for that and you're gonna get a whole bunch of tips for tweaks, where to go in the operating system and things to turn on and off so that the operating system doesn't mess with your, your audio performance. You know, because even if you have a super fast computer, if it's weighted down with all kinds of bloat and all kinds of extra things that it's trying to do, sometimes those things can interrupt certain important audio functions. And those audio functions need to be done in real time so that you don't, you don't mess up what you're doing. So uh, you, can, you can search for that. If you make those tweaks, it's going to work pretty good. That's my general advice on the Mac versus PC thing for audio. However, if you're also wanting to do video production, that changes everything. If you wanna do video, it's pretty straightforward. Get a Mac. In fact, get a Mac with an M1 Pro or M1 Max CPU. Uh, it just blows everything else out of the water when it comes to video. It's kind of a no-brainer. That's kind of what you have to do at this point, especially if you wanna do 4K video. So go there. But again, if you're just doing a DAW, you know, either way. Be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.